Hello and welcome to Choose Life. I'm Deborah Ross, empowering you to live in the blessing. Friend, the battle is real. The stakes are high. We are in a war. We are in a war against the things of this world. The kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of this world are in complete opposition. And I'm going to tell you that we need to learn to stand our ground and to take some things back. In fact, John 10 says, These things I have spoken to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have trouble, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. So friend, today we're going to be talking about taking it back, taking back what the devil has stolen. You don't want to miss this. It's time to stand firm and stand up for the kingdom and take some things back in Jesus' name. I'm Mercedes Wilson, and it's only because of the blood of Jesus that I am victorious. If I had to write the script for my life, it would be a heck of a lot different than the one that I've had. But then again, I wouldn't know Christ like I do. I like to view trials as a bracelet that you can put different links on. You know, those links can be insecurity, self-doubt, fear, hurt, and rejection. All of those things that I've dealt with that resulted from being sexually molested as a child or being tossed aside by the ones that I loved, lost all of my possessions that we worked so hard for. You know, the white picket fence, the, the American dream. And the kicker, being diagnosed with stage two breast cancer at the age of 28 years old. I'm looking around at God like, are you serious? Is this really happening to me? I remember sitting in the room with the doctors and them telling me, that I was stage two breast cancer and the room started spinning. My world came crashing down and I remember feeling confusion and fear and confusion and fear. It was so many different emotions that I didn't know what to do with it. There were so many times when I was going through breast cancer that I asked God, why me? Finally, I got his answer in three words. Why not you? I've now come to realize that everything I've gone through, he has and will continue to get the glory from. You want to know how I know? Because I still have my mind, peace, joy, and I get to experience his love every single day that I open my eyes and get to see my husband, teenagers, instead of twins that I was told, by the way, that I could not have after my chemotherapy due to the breast cancer. I knew that there was more to come from my battle with breast cancer, and from that battle, a nonprofit organization that I'm the founder and executive director of called For Our Daughters was birthed. I remember when I was 12 years old and one of my teachers invited me to church with her. And it was that experience where I got my first taste of love and my first taste of, I guess, hope. From that day forward, I knew that there was something more that was to come. Also, I learned that your testimony is where the power is. You can help so many people through your testimony. And God has allowed me to be able to do that by way of For Our Daughters. In 2012, we reached 700 young women with the message of advocating for their own health and wellness. Today in 2018, we've reached over 2,000 young women with that same message. You talk about God turning your pain around for the good, right? I now have a radio show that I get to discuss topics within today's church with some great leaders all around Western New York and telling my story by way of my new book, Hope, how faith carried me through my darkest hours. That book was a major turning point for me. It came out early 2018, and that book highlights all of the tough times in my life and then how God delivered me out of every single one of them. I'm so grateful for this book and to be able to tell my story and share it with the world. So pick up the book on Amazon, westbowpress.com or Barnes and Noble online to learn about my journey because trust me, if he can do it for me, he will do it for you. Friend, it's time to take some things back. 
It's time to say, Lord, I will not let go until you bless me. It is time to push back and say, we're going to stand together as one body, one body, the church, against the perversion and against the hostility that we have in this world. It's time for us to advance the kingdom. I don't know about you, but I'm thinking about my children, my grandchildren, my great-grandchildren, my great-great-grandchildren. What are we leaving to them? It's time to take some things back in the name of Jesus. So we're looking at John 16 and verse 33. It says, These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble. You will have tribulation. But be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. That's Jesus talking. Be of good cheer, for I've overcome the world. You see, Jesus has paid the price, but now we have to walk some things out. So if we just sit back and just say, okay, Sarah, Sarah, whatever will be, will be, well, the enemy's going to have a field day. We have got to be soldiers of the cross. We've got to be, you know, in our dad's army, the army of the Lord. And we've got to be advancing the kingdom. You know, sometimes, I don't know about you, but I just feel wore out from the news of the day. Just wore out. You know, sometimes it's just exhausting fighting the lies of our culture. Do you ever feel that way? I do. Sometimes fear tries to creep in and, and this fear of this upside down world tries to get in my head and make me, you know, think about my children and, and think about what is, the, what is the enemy telling my children, you know? Sometimes we just feel tired of climbing that uphill battle of righteousness because it is an uphill battle. I'm telling you what, if you're floating along the stream, you're probably going the wrong way. <laughs> it is an uphill swim. If you're going to live in righteousness, you've got to swim upstream. Now I know that some of you have suffered you may have suffered from adultery. You may have suffered from divorce. Suffered, you know, there's, we hear about school shootings now. I mean, what is going on? What's going on in our world? This is so sad. God help us. Drug addictions, overdoses, suicides, sexual perversions being pushed on our children. God help us. Lord, We've got to take it back. We've got to take back the kingdom of God for the sake of our children and our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren. What are we going to leave? What is going to be our legacy? We've got to stand up and speak out. You know, it seems like today that right is wrong and wrong is right. But you know what? This is nothing new. Let's look at Isaiah 5, 20 and verses 20 through 23. It says, Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe to those who are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. Woe to mighty men at drinking wine. Woe to men valiant at mixing intoxicating drink who justify the wicked for a bribe and take away justice from the righteous man. Whoa! This is Isaiah 5 and verse 20 through 23. Woe to those who call good evil and evil good. You see, God has boundaries. It's like, it's like we have boundaries for our children. You know, when, I, when you tell your child, when you say, don't touch that hot burner because it will hurt. It will burn you. You might have to go to the hospital. Don't touch it. You know, but sometimes kids don't believe and they're like, I don't believe you and they want to touch it. Ow! <laughs> and God has boundaries for us. He says, you know, I've got, I've got my commandments. I've got my boundaries because I don't want you to get hurt. I love you. And I want you to, um, to live in the blessings that I have for you and not live in pain from doing the wrong thing. So his word says, woe to those who call good evil and evil good. You see, when we, when we switch things up, we're getting outside of those boundaries. So there's only one truth, and that's God's truth. And I need to agree with God. So if I've got my own truth, I'm missing the Lord because He is truth. And my job is to agree with Him. Woe to those who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe to those getting outside of those boundaries. That's dangerous. 
And he says, those who are wise in their own eyes. And the thing is, you know, um, I think today, you know, especially in our country, you know, people are just, you know, they're educated. Uh, you know, they've got good jobs. They've got nice homes. And often we get wise in our own eyes. We get too smart for our britches, really. And God says, what are those who are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight? See, we need to be seeking the Lord because He's the one that has all the wisdom. And listen to this. And this is a little uncomfortable, but bear with me, okay? It says, woe to men mighty at drinking wine. Woe to men valiant for mixing intoxicating drink. You see, we have a, we have a, a, a thing in this culture where, you know, we're popping pills, we're mixing drinks, we're smoking dope, we're doing all these things, you know, trying to get peace. But Jesus said He would give us peace. And we're looking at the false things instead of looking at the true thing, and that is Him. So woe to them that do these things. You know, the devil has squatted on God's creation since the beginning of time. He's a squatter. He's a stealer. He's a thief. This is the Lord's earth and the fullness thereof. The devil has been twisting truth since the Garden of Eden. In the Garden of Eden, the devil said to Eve, he said, but did God really say you would die? I mean, what is dying? Nobody's ever died before. Did God really say? So he's twisting the truth. And if you don't know the Word of God, if you don't know what the Word of God says, the devil will twist the truth to you, my friend. The only way to know the truth from the error, from the wrong, is to know the Word of God. And sometimes, I'll be honest with you, I mean, we're all in this boat together. We're all in this world together, and we're all hearing the enemy chant these lies. I have to go look things up again. I have to go look and say, okay, God, is that what you really said there? So if I have to go look it up again, I know you certainly need to go look it up again as well. We need to keep our eyes on what the Lord says and don't listen to what our culture is telling us about what the Lord says because His Word is the pure breath of God. But what somebody else says about His Word could be skewed. So we need to keep our eyes on His Word and not listen to twisted truth because twisted truth is really not the truth at all. It's just a flat-out lie. That's what it is. The devil is a liar. This is God's earth. And we are children of the Lord's. Psalm 24, 1 says, The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Friend, do you dwell in this earth? If you do, then you're a child of the king. That means you're God's prized possession. And as a child of the king, you have the authority, you have the responsibility to take some things back. You see, Jesus gave us gifts. When he left this earth to go back to heaven, he did not leave us and say, bye-bye, good luck. He said, I'm going to leave you with some tools. I'm going to leave you with the armor of God, and I'm going to leave you with spiritual gifts. And I want you to be about my father's business because you can do even greater works than these. That's what Jesus said. And so we're going to look at today how to take back our mind, how to take back our purpose, our integrity, our children, our marriage, our health, our finances, our joy, our peace, our vision, our destiny. Friend, the dictionary says that the word promise means this. You see, because our Bible... Let me come out right over here if you can catch me over here. The Word of God is full of promises. The Word of God is full of promises. And the dictionary says, it says that a promise is a legally binding declaration. A legally binding declaration that gives the person to whom it is made a right to expect, everybody say expect, expect or to claim the performance or forbearance of a specified act. A promise is a legally binding declaration that gives the person to whom it is made a right to expect or to claim the performance. Have you been expecting God's promises to come to pass in your life? Have you been expecting to claim the performance of the promises? Friend, you are a child of the king. And if you're a child of the king, then you need to be about your father's business and agreeing with God and taking some things back. God prom God's promises are for everyone who believes His Word, who walks in obedience, oh, who walks in obedience, and who will persevere. You see, the enemy's saying, 
oh really, I bet if I do this, they'll give up. I bet if I push them here, they'll quit. But you gotta be in perseverance because this, the enemy doesn't fight fair. He doesn't fight fair. So you gotta know what your daddy says and then you gotta stand and having done all, you gotta stand. And you've got to start expecting and claiming the performance of the promise in God's word because it is time to stand up for the kingdom. Proverbs 12, 7 says, The wicked are overthrown and are no more, but the house of the righteous will stand. The house of the righteous will stand. Friend, are you going to stand? Are you going to stand and say, I will not be pushed around by the lies of the devil anymore. And I'm going to stand in love. And I'm going to stand in righteousness and peace and truth. So, Today our study is about putting on the whole armor of God. And once we've done all we know to do, stand. Let's just talk about the stand word for a minute. You know, so many times people will come to me and they'll say, well, I've done this and I've done this and I've checked this box and I've done that and and nothing's happening. Okay, well, no kidding, because the enemy is not going to just say, I surrender. No, he's going to keep pushing, 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 pushing until he sees that you're not giving up. Until you say, I will love not my life unto the death. In other words, devil, you have to kill me. I'm not moving. Because if I die, I'm going to heaven. But I believe that my daddy is more than able and willing to take care of this thing and to deliver me from the fiery furnace. And so you've got to say, Lord, I trust you. I've done all I know to do. I've checked all the boxes. I've done all I know to do in the natural. I've prayed. Maybe I've fasted. You know, I've given. I've worshipped. I've read. And now I've got to stand. I've got to stand. And don't move. If you want to see the promise of the Lord fulfilled, don't move. Don't back up. Ephesians 6, 12 says, We don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but we wrestle against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual wickedness in high places. You see, our battle is not against people. It's against this other kingdom, this demonic kingdom, spiritual wickedness in high places. There's a war going on, and we can't even see the characters in the war. But we sure better learn how to fight that war and fight it according to the prescription that God gives us in His Word. So he says, Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. Friend, this is the belt of truth. If we want to fight God's battle and if we want to win the war, we've got to win it with truth. You can't have a half truth and expect to win the battle. You've got to have the whole truth and nothing but the truth to win this battle. And the only way you're going to get the whole truth is the Word of God. So we've got to close our ears to the culture and their truth. And we've got to open our eyes and our hearts to God and His truth. So have your loins girt about with truth. We've got to walk with the belt of truth on at all times. We've got to have on the breastplate of righteousness. And that means we've got to be in right standing with God. It was accounted unto Abraham for righteousness because he believed God. Friend, God wants you to believe Him, but you're going to have a hard time believing Him if you're sinning against Him all the time because you're going to think God's against me. So you're going to have to be obedient to the Word of God and walk in righteousness, have a right standing with God, obey the Holy Spirit, and then believe Him because it was accounted to Abraham for righteousness because he believed God. So really, righteousness is just believing God, just believing Him, believing He loves you, believing He's got promises for you, and He will defend you. And then it says, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. You've got to have on shoes of peace. If you want to win this battle, You have got to be a person who lives in peace and who offers peace. You know, you can be strong. You can be on the front lines of warfare for the kingdom of God, but still be in peace. Still be in peace. You can do it because the Holy Spirit empowers you to do that. And we seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. All these things will be added unto us. And these things include peace. So we have got to walk with the shoes of peace on our feet. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you may be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. I love that. you got to have the shield of faith. You see, the enemy is going to throw those darts. The battlefield is right here. And the darts are going to come. Lie number one, lie number two. Scenario number one, movie number two. The devil is always working to put craziness in our heads. 
but we've got to have the shield of faith. We've got to say, no, no devil. The word of God says this. It does not say that. You're a liar. So we've got to have the shield of faith up to protect ourselves. And the helmet of salvation, the helmet of salvation. And friend, yes, you do need to be born again. That's the first, first step. That's it. You've got to be born again. But let me tell you, it's more than that. Okay? Once you become born again, you've got to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Because your mind is not sanctified. <laughs> your mind is going every which way. And so you've got to take out those old thoughts and you've got to put in God thoughts and put on the helmet of salvation, who you are in Christ every day. And the sword of the Spirit, I love that, the sword of the Spirit. That's the Word of God. So you've got to be able to talk the Word of God. You've got to be able to walk the Word of God. You've got to be able to live the Word of God. You've got to be able to stay steady with the Word of God. You've got to have that sword of the Spirit going on in your life. And it's got to be a lifestyle, not a once in a while pick it up. A lifestyle. You know, study God's word. Get that sword going in your life and watch him do his thing because God will blow your mind if you will trust his promises and you'll put on the whole armor. And then it says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Friend, we've got to learn to pray specific. And the word supplication actually means to plead. You know, we used to hear in the Christian world, you know, we'll just ask God once and then just forget about it, leave it there. Well, my Bible tells me that I'm to knock and keep knocking, ask and keep asking, seek and keep seeking, to pray and supplicate. That means I've got to plead sometimes. I've got to say, God, I will not let go until you bless me. I will not let go until you bless me. It's time to take some things back. It's time to take back the craziness in this world for the kingdom of God and for the sake of our children, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren. It's time to take some things back. It's time to take, take back some health. Some of you have health issues. Some of you have family issues. Some of you have, you know, just money issues. It's time to take some things back. Take authority according to the word of God and go against the kingdom of darkness and say, no, this is not for me. I will not, I, this is not for me. I don't receive it because I'm a child of the king. And so prayer and supplication, prayer and supplication, you know, praying back God's word, pray it back to him because that's his promise. So instead of just saying, oh God, will you help me? Lord, will you please help me? Find out what his word says and get your flesh out of it and pray his word back to him and say, Lord, your word says in the name of Jesus that I will be the head and not the tail, the first and not the last, the lender and not the bar. Lord, you said you would bless me. Uh, Bless me coming and bless me going. You said, Lord, that when my enemies rise up against me one way, Lord, they would flee before me in seven directions, Lord. You said that you would give me houses I didn't build, wells I didn't dig, Lord. You said this, Lord. You said, Lord, that my children will, will, will not depart from the word if I train them up in the ways of the Lord. God, this is what you told me, Lord. And so you've got to pray these things back to God and you've got to believe, believe that he does what he says he will do. And he is who he says he is because he makes promises and promises are binding declarations. We just got to get in the lane where we believe God's promises. So I don't know about you, but I'm tired of putting up, giving up and shutting up. Friend, it's time to wake up, show up and speak up. It's time to wake up because the battle is real. The stakes are high. We are in a war with the kingdom of darkness. But God says that we are more than conquerors. We are more than conquerors through Christ who strengthens us. And that's just not a Bible school uh, verse that you learn. That is something we need to take as ours. We are more than conquerors through Christ who strengthens us. We need to believe that. And then we need to be advancing the kingdom in the name of Jesus advancing the kingdom in the name of Jesus because it's time to take some things back. Take it back. Take back what the devil has stolen. In Jesus' mighty name, you, my friend, are more than a conqueror. 
Amen. Hey, I'm Jacinda with Stolen Lunches Bible Study Community. We do Bible studies and we steal away to be fed by God. I realized in doing this ministry walk that it really gets hard sometimes and you know we have to fight back this time to really bask in the love of Jesus. So what did you say that what you're experiencing right now has been phenomenal? Yeah you may have other things to do but you just received a powerful word from Choose Life with Deborah Ross Ministries. I've known this woman, this mighty woman of God for a couple years and she never fails to amaze me. You know, she never surprises me because she's on fire for Christ and she moves day in and day out for God. And so with that, I want to sow into her ministry and I pray that you will do that as well. If you were fed by God just now and you're still feeding on the good news of Jesus Christ, will you do us a favor and lock arms with us? Sow into the ministry so we can go out and bless so many more people. There is an uprising in the kingdom of God and we choose life with Deborah Ross.